Oh, the iconic University of Fort Hare down in the Eastern Cape held a special place, of course, in Archbishop uh, Tutu's heart. It produced several luminaries, including former President Nelson Mandela. Tutu was appointed as Anglican chaplain uh, to the university in the late 1960s. So it's a history for the decades, it seems, joined by the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Fort Hare, Sakela Bolungu. Sakela, morning to you, uh, and uh, condolences to uh, the loss of a man who had an incredible influence on your institution. Uh, just remind viewers, if we could, for a moment, uh, how it felt for when you and the university heard the news of the passing of the arch. Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting me to the program. Yes, indeed, it's, it's a shock. Uh, it is a shock. The Archbishop has held, as you say, a, a very special place uh, in the life of this university. Uh, the association began way back in 1968. Um, the, the two things happened in 1968. He was, in, he was appointed as a lecturer at the Federal Theological Seminar, which was right next door. And at the same time, he was appointed a chaplain at the University of Fort Hare. So you can imagine the bond has always been that close. And we worked with him later. He became chairperson of council of the university in the late 1970s. And of course, he was awarded in 2001 an honorary doctorate in, in theology. So it's a very special bond. And we, for, for us, we are in mourning together with the country and together with the world. I just spoke to Bishop Paul Verain from the Methodist Church a few minutes ago uh, before I, I came across to speak to you, and he was saying that this is what made the Archbishop so unique, despite being uh, an Archbishop uh, towards the end uh, and also uh, highly influential. He never worked in silos. It wasn't just about faith and religion. Uh, the importance of education was always paramount, probably next to uh, the influence he had in the world of politics. And uh, I suppose uh, it's easy to draw parallels between what you just explained and how important education was uh, for the Archbishop. Indeed, but, but let, let's remember and, and, and trace our steps back a little. His father, his own father, was a teacher. Mm. So he grew, he grew up in that environment of teaching. And of course, the first uh, profession he chose was teaching and the, which he left reluctantly because of the introduction of boundary education. So as a form of protest. But, um, and then he went to study. When he came back from England, the first place he, he came to was Alice at, at, at FedSem, at their seminary, and of course that. So education has held a very important part for, 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 for the Archbishop. But let's, let's not forget, he was not just, um, he was not just a, a, a bishop, Archbishop. He's, he's an intellectual of note in this country. And you can see from his prolific writings, from his prolific uh, uh, speeches and sermons and so on, what comes through there is not just a, the man of, 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 of the cloth, but what comes through is an intellectual, a person who's deeply, deeply interested in educating and education. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, that uh, educating and education for a moment. Uh, as uh, the Vice Chancellor, how does the younger generation, and I mean that respectfully, how does the younger generation, perhaps coming through uh, their first few years uh, at your institution, how do we begin to portray the status, the stature, the legacy, the life of someone uh, like Desmond Tutu uh, through a university like yours? There's, there's a lot of scope for that, and, and unfortunately, there is a disconnect uh, increasingly over, the, over time uh, between the younger generation and they, uh, that, that very powerful moment in history, the moment of, of, of uh, liberation, the moment of struggle, uh, which defines uh, the Archbishop. So there is a little bit of that disconnect. But remember also, that disconnect is not just uh, because of the younger generation. The university itself was a multi-denominational uh, institution when it was started in, in, in 1916. And pre pre predominantly the Methodists, the Anglicans, and the Presbyterians. So we've had that, but there is a sense, and there's a reason for us to recapture that, not, not for religion's sake so much, but as legacy. Let, let me just say, for example, one of the things that, we, that I've been thinking that I, I, I was about to introduce to my executive was that we, should, we need a symposium. We need a symposium that's going to bring about closure between uh, the federal seminary, which was annexed uh, uh, forcefully by apartheid in 1975, to the which was shut down first in 1974 and annexed to Fort Hare. We need to do that. And I think it's through uh, processes such as those that we can then begin to show the youth uh, and, and younger people, working people as well, that, that the deep connections and the, the various threads that made up the life of Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu.
Uh, and when we, we now look ahead to uh, the kind of legacy he's left behind, if we move away from, uh, as I said, respectfully, the, the youngsters, for those of us uh, who were there for the majority of his influence on South Africa uh, over the years, how do we try and not forget the teachings. Right now, of course, we're all looking back on the quotes, the powerful speeches, uh, the activism. But how do we ensure, just like we did uh, with Nelson Mandela, uh, that his legacy and his life lessons don't vanish uh, into the echo chamber of history? Indeed, I, I think it's very unfortunate. And I've watched some of the stuff um, that's been happening uh, on social media platforms. And, and I think a lot of it, a lot of it is really driven by lack of information and lack of understanding of, of, of the work of the, of how profound the work of the Archbishop has been these, these past decades. So, yes, we, we need to do that. On our part, as I say, one of the things that we need to do and that we plan to do is to work closely with the uh, Bishop, Archbishop Desmond and Lea Tutu Legacy Foundation to try and see how we can preserve we can preserve that legacy. And preserving that legacy also means reaching out to younger generations, younger people, and, and basically kind of create, create a hub where some of these lessons, uh, 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 life lessons from the Archbishop's life could be then uh, um, put at the disposal of younger people. It has a massive, massive uh, uh, um, uh, legacy here. Interestingly, the Archbishop is known and throughout the, the 70s, particularly the 80s, as a person who was right in the thick of it. But that being in the thick of it started in 1968, actually, at the University of Forte, mm -hmm. when uh, the university basically uh, called the police uh, to, to beat up and arrest the students, and he jumped into action. And ever since, it never stopped. So those are some of the lessons, those are some of the things that the younger generation don't always know about, and I, I, it's incumbent on us, and we're taking it on as a challenge as a university, that we shall seek to preserve uh, and, and put that legacy at, disposal of, at the disposal of a wider, much wider public.